Let's see. For those of you that I haven't had a chance to meet, I don't think it's very many, my name is Mike Thomas. I'm the president of Kansas City Wood Turners and be your master of ceremonies tonight. Jack's on the phone, solving a major AV problem or something. So, uh, okay. What I wanted to do is, let's see. We should have some new members here tonight. Have we got, because we, Little Bird told me we had seven new members in the last month. Wow. Yeah. So, new members, anyone here visiting for the first time? Okay, takes care of that. Let me review the... Yes. Are you a first-time member or a first-time visitor or a new member? Oh, we got a, we got a two-pointer. And what is your name? Melinda. Melinda. Thank, how did you find us? Great. Well, it won't take long for us to fix that for you. Great. Well, thank you. Make yourself at home. Thank you. All right. Review the agenda real quickly for what we're going to do tonight. We're going to start off with our um, demo, and uh, then we're going to um, have some brief announcements, take our refreshment break, which is back behind the screen here, and uh, make sure you take a look at all of the uh, silent auction items and the silent art auction items, a gorgeous ash bowl, natural edge, that was turned by Kent Townsend. And uh, after with a, we'll resume and then have a uh, uh, challenge. Anything that, uh, that you have put a new finish on that you haven't used before. And then show and tell and wrap up and be out of here hopefully by 9 o'clock. Okay? Great. So, without any further ado, let me introduce our esteemed vice president, uh, Mr. Chris Cohen, who is going to show us how to make a roulette, desktop roulette game. So, it looks very interesting. So, take it away, Chris. Hey, there we go. So I saw a picture on Pinterest that kind of inspired me, inspired this. Um, always interested in finding ways to use flat, flat wood or uh, cutoffs. And this was a ideal that you didn't have to be too thick or anything. It um, was something that was fun. Once I made one and, and actually got it to function correctly and, and throw them around, I just was kind of enthralled by it. I, had a lot of my nephews and nieces playing around with it and really enjoying it. So I kind of evolved it a little bit. Um, sorry for Effie, I move around a lot. Um, this was kind of my first prototype that I did that had a plexiglass top on it. And that the nice thing about that is that, that you don't lose the beads and everything, but I didn't start it correctly so the way I held on to the lid was basically using double stick tape to hold it on. It functioned pretty well until I had it out at a display and this kid come along <laughs> and swatted it onto the ground and I had to do a little repair work and ever since then it's been a little iffy. Um, made a nice about eight and a half inch one um, for my nephew one time. That that went really well. The Again, the thing I like was that it uses dimensional lumber, it uses one by material. It's easy to turn. It, um, I was literally going to shooty lumber for about three weeks, three Saturdays in a row, and grabbing chunks of poplar out of their cutoff bin, then coming in here and squaring them up, and then going home and trying to practice this uh, project. Um, and they're easy to customize you when you get into the deck. 
you can go anywhere you want with it. It's just kind of you know what the basic um, what you're trying to do, the basic function of this item, and so you just kind of play around with the decoration on it. Um, tonight, I'm hoping to get through just the what I call the arena, which is the bottom piece, and um, the arena. <laughs> And then what I call the stadium, just because its function is to keep the dang beads from bouncing out of the arena. Um, <laughs> my wife does bead work, so she, um, I had access to a lot of different kinds of beads, and I just kind of found the ones that worked. Problem with the beads are that they do have a little hole, so sometimes they'll roll and, and set and not go, keep rolling because of the little hole. And so I got to thinking, well, what would be small and plastic and, and about the right size? And the other day I thought, well, the airsoft pellets that my son used to use were about, in my mind, the right size. Um, so I went and picked up at Walmart. They are the perfect size. They're little bouncy beads, too, and they don't have any holes. Five dollars, and I got 2,000 of them. <laughs> So, huh? They are airsoft pellets. I actually had to go to the ammunition part of Walmart to get them, but they're just little plastic beads. They ended up, my wife was telling me, six millimeter beads, that's what you want. Ended up, I looked over on that and it said they're six millimeter beads, so uh, problem solved. Uh, they are pretty bouncy, so you got you to gotta prepare your stadium correctly or they will uh, bounce out. The, the window... Here, let me do this. Jack, can you go to the overhead? Okay, so the window is, is the ultimate in, in just keeping everything together. It was nice because you can uh, travel around with it a little bit and not worry about the beads getting lost. But same concept, it's just two pieces of wood put together with a friction fit, which I fit this one a little better than others, I guess. And then it's got a plexiglass piece that I actually cut that on the lathe too, and then it just slips in there and fits into the lip that I left for it. This one was a little loose, so I noticed I got some tape on the edge to keep it pushed in. I never, I didn't ever glue them because I didn't think, I wanted them to be able to be removed because I enjoy spinning the top and having it be able to free form in there a little bit more than it's controlled here, but just so you can see that it does work. And once it gets going, um, it'll kind of write itself sometimes because of the beads going through it, but I've had some of them where they'll just spin forever and uh, the action on the beads is kind of fun. This one's got colored beads in it, so you literally could create about any game you wanted out of it. Three-piece thing and a top. I'm not going to probably get time to go through the plexiglass part of it, but literally put a couple of pieces of double stick tape on this, center it up using this as your center point, and stick it to your piece of wood. Take a cutoff tool and, and cut your edge to size, and uh, you might have to do a little bit of polishing on it, but snap it into place. It worked great. Okay, so I'm going to start with the arena, arena piece and three strips of, I don't know that you have to have three, but I feel comfortable with three strips of double stick Turner's tape, which is this stuff that uh, we've seen before. Not carpet tape, and it's got to be a good quality tape if you want to be comfortable. Um, however, at the start of this, you really can be a little bit more secure because you're going to be able to use your live center to give you the pressure and hold it hold it to place. So my live center is creating the pressure that ultimately when I back it off, I'm hoping that my pressure sensitive tape will do the rest.
So the first thing is I'm just going to round it off. It's the bottom piece, and I'm going to try to fit the top piece to it and want it to be, I want the bottom piece that I'll fit to it to be a little larger than this piece. So once I get it to true round, knowing that these two pieces are the same size, then I will cut a little bit more off of this piece so that I know that this is going to end up being a little larger so that I can size them together. Um, I think you could do this on a metal, a metal face plate. You'd have to be careful, obviously, when you're cutting right into here that you don't just dull your, your, um, tool. But I've always used wood because at one point I'm going to create a jam chuck out of that face plate. And it's hard to do that with metal. Why do I feel like it's not going fast? There we go. Poplar is, it's cheap, it's available. Like I said, I walked into Shooty Lumber three weekends in a row, grabbing probably five or six chunks out of there cutoff box and I'd go up to the cash register and I'd say what do I owe you for these because it said 50 cents or something on the, the box and they'd look at me and go come back and buy something sometime okay, okay. <laughs> and I did I went in with Kevin the other day and bought the stuff for the demo I felt good about that so I went back and next Sunday or Saturday and got some more poplar <laughs> so I am round right now, I believe. Sounds like it. Um, I'm gonna take one little bit more, a little bit more off, just to make I, sure I can get the other one bigger. Yeah, one more cut, no problem. Um, now I go to my handy dandy cut off tool or diamond. What do you call these? Diamond sh headed cut offs. Um, and I'm just going to be making the tenon that the stadium, or yes, the stadium portion will fit into. So I make it about an eighth of an inch deep or so. And my next cut then is going to be starting the arena. Actually, I need to do one more push cut with the cutoff tool. I'm going to come in. This is just establishing kind of the width of where the two pieces are going to fit together. So I'll go over about a quarter of an inch from my first one. And I'm gonna go down just a little bit deeper than I went on that outer tenon. And that's just establishing the upper portion of what will be the floor of the arena. That's just the high, high point of that. Um, now it's the spindle gouge is my tool of choice here. Um, again, I'm real comfortable. Everything's pressured up against here. Other than, I think this is moving. But okay. Um, so I want a slow curve towards the center. And by keeping that live center in place, I'm able to see the depth that I'm going down into it. And that's kind of useful when you get down to the bottom and you don't want to, you want to leave yourself a little bit of thickness on the bottom so that you can turn it around and cut a bottom out of it um, where you'll be going up a little bit. And I'll show you during show and tell or the challenge what happens when you get a little too close to the bottom with your, your cuts. Um,
Now, ultimately, I am not going to be able to keep that center in there the whole time. But right now, I am using that depth right there to tell me kind of where I'm at in that, that piece of, of wood. So I'm uh, just about 3 8 inch in. I got to get this down a little bit more there. So based on that depth, kind of doing a quick Chris judge. Yeah, it leaves me a little more than an eighth there on the bottom of it. That's about right. Um, I'm pretty much where I want to be. I've got some ripples there that I want to get out, and I need to take this outer, outer portion and make it flat with the push cut that I put in there with the cutoff tool. Um, tool of choice for me, I think there'd be about a million ways you could do that, but tool of choice for me is a half inch round nose because I can, <laughs> can kind of pull this and straighten out some of those ripples as well as just getting that in to go away. Looks like I might have to hit it once with this so this is the part where you pray a little bit you guys especially so i'm going to back off the if our tape works we're all good <laughs> there's nothing to fear here um so this is kind of a weird little cut but i'm going to go this way with it just to cut that little ridge off so i got a i'm going smooth into that wall um, might take this and try to smooth it just one more time. Well, look okay. at now on taking out this nub based on things I've learned here because everything I've learned. The tool there or on the tool rest there. Okay, so uh, spindle gouge, I'm going to cut this way so that all my pressure is going up against the tape. I'm not going to shear it until I have to take a little bit off of the end here. So I feel pretty comfortable with that tape there. I'm not, I haven't, I, I've done a lot of them. I haven't had any of them fly off. I imagine if I, about the time I say that, it's going to fly off. Um, you do want to take a, you do want it to go all the way to the center with a slope. You, you, uh, you need that slope because you want the beads to collect down there right in the center so, and the top to spin right down to the center so you, you see it uh, or you, they'll always shoot out then from the top. They don't get stuck out on the side. Okay, so at this point, my arena is the floor's done. Um, I would come back and this would be where I'd sand. I'd sand just the arena floor and maybe this inside of the, the wall of the arena. Wouldn't worry at all about this and, and this edge because I'm going to do a friction fit. I don't want to, don't want to sand on it right now. I want it to have a little fiber there to grab hold of. Um, but, oh, no, I got one more thing. So this is the point while well, you got it centered up and everything where you establish your circle for drilling your, your holes into it. And, I, you know, um, I, these vary a little bit. You don't want so much, you don't want it to be too tight to the wall or the beads will get up there and wedge between each other and one will get stuck up there. Um, but you want to, on a small piece, you want it as, as big of diameter as you can get out of the action of the beads. So I'm going to go in about oh, a quarter of an inch or so. Draw a circle. On all of these that I've done, I've literally just looked at it, said, here's half, here's half of that, then let me cut it into thirds. In other words, I did not get real critical on where these 
lines would end up. I could eyeball it about as close, and I haven't found any of them where I was far enough off that I thought, oh, I should have should have measured those. However, I did create some instructions with nice little pictures, and on the back of them is a just a circle diagram that's got 12 radius lines on it. So if you want to use this, center it up on your piece, you could take a pen or something and mark the 12 points yourself. So now this piece is where I want it to be for now, because I will finish the top of it, with the bottom of it later. Um, now, going on to the stadium piece. And really, the function of the stadium, I try to get an inside curve off of that wall so that as the beads kind of go bouncing around, it, it, if they hit it, it, I want them to bounce back to the arena and not out of the stadium, so to say. And on this piece, I will be ultimately, I will be taking the center out of it. So I do want one of my strips of tape to be there in the center so that that piece, as I cut through the, this into my face plate, that piece won't want to just fly out of there. It'll just kind of stay there. But actually, I end up, I'll have this up against it the whole time, and it won't be a problem. So again, mark an X on this piece. Use that X to kind of line up your center point so you can get your maximum out of the diameter that's possible. If you don't trust the tape, you can take the uh, take the face plate off, put it on the floor, and stand on it. Right, Mike? That's a, Tom Boley taught us that. Tom Boley, who's going to be here in October and is a excellent instructor on just anything turning. So I would highly advise if you have opportunity to come to the demo in October, come see Tom. He is a very soft-spoken, very knowledgeable, and a great teacher. Um, he's the one who made me comfortable with the tape. <laughs> okay, let's see. Cut off. Oh, first things first, round the outside. And again, my, my hope is that when I get this round, I will be a little larger than the arena piece. And I had to name them because when I was trying to write instructions on it, I was constantly going top and bottom piece and top piece and, and then talking about a top that spins on it and it got confusing. So I said, well, if you look at it like it is a stadium, then the floor of it would be the arena, and the outside that goes around it would be the stadium. Maybe it'd be the seats, I don't know. Oh, oh, I got a little bit more. One more cut. Now yeah, we're round all the way around. Now what I want to 
check. I'm a little bit bigger than that piece, which is exactly what I want. And then I'm going to use calipers, or you can use a tape measure. My calipers broke at home the other day, so I had to go get a new pair. But before I got a new pair, I had to use just a, my scale, my trusty, my trusty architect scale to do my dimensions. Good golly, what did I do here? There we go. So, um, this all I'm going to do now is try, and I'm going to try, and I got a backup if in case I don't get it right, but I'm going to try to just match my, my dimension here so that I can create a tenon and a friction fit with the lid. So, if I do this right. Now, I know some guys will spin this thing while they're holding this up, but that scares the heck out of me, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just get it close and check it. Not bad, not bad. Okay, I always got to remember, I am making this so that it fits on the outside, so I'm actually going to the inside of that line. This is the part that I hope doesn't take 15 minutes to get through. Trusting my tape. <laughs> Got to get this diam or dimension right there to fit in there. Um, it can be a little loose on the inside, but I want it tight on the outside. Put a little chamfer out on that outer edge and that'll guide me in a little bit better. This is where I was worried that I could take a half hour just to get this thing friction fit to fit good. Hopefully it won't be that way. And um, I can show you here when we get to that, if it gets a little loose and it's not as tight of a fit, because really that lid doesn't have to fit super tight, um, you're going to do the back end of this with, for the most part, the uh, live center can be up against it so you can feel good about things. Uh, my concern now is can I get it apart once I get it there? <laughs> yeah, it's, I got a fit. Well, okay. Maybe one more turn. <laughs> Now, the nice thing about how this had been set up is that it does have a center point on it, so I should be able to get back to center. Work with me here. You know what's going on here. Let me see. There we go. Sorry if 
if you have to listen to me breathe. So ideally I would not have pulled that off the tape because I'm hoping I can get it back about as close as I need to get this fit right. But adapt and move on. I'll make you comfortable by putting that up <laughs> for right now. <laughs> All right, we'll see how close we are. Ooh. It's definitely off a little bit. But we'll see. Okay, that's a good fit. So, a real tight fit, and I could I could literally do this without putting that up to it, but knowing that I'm going to take a little bit off that bottom, I do not mind having that kind of pressed up against there. If I was worried about the dot, I would just get a little cut off of something that I've made before that has a center point on it, and I would use it to create the pressure there. But I'm not worried about the little little pinpoint that this is going to put in it because I'm going to end up cutting it away. And all I'm really trying to do is keep it from moving around too much while I'm here. Um, tape can come off. So there's two things that I want to do while this is uh, attached here. I want to create a foot for the bottom, and I want to um, match my diameters on the edges. So let's see. I will go for the diameters first since they're both a little bit off now that I've re-taped it. So I've got this thing upside down. My top is on the bottom and my bottom is on the top. So all I'm doing here is just matching my two diameters. So they got a nice clean cut between them. And then putting a little shape to the bottom which initially I was just leaving the bottom as the flat piece of wood, but it does add a little bit of design element if you can kind of create a little bit of a foot on it. Keeping in mind where you've got wood and where you don't have wood on the inside because you've cut some of it away. But I'm going to face this off because that's got to be a nice place for it to set and then I'm going to come in here and just dive in a little bit now I went in and then I kind of came out because I ultimately want it to kind of curve with the way the arena Florida goes hope doesn't can't cut through the bottom or I don't want to cut through the bottom um, All that good. I tell you what, I have been to the edge on that. Okay. <laughs> but I didn't. I haven't been through that. That's how I should say it. I have not been through that. Um, now, if, if I wanted to keep, if, if this was loose and I wanted to keep the live center up against it all the time, the whole time, then I'd pull it off at this point and use a chisel and chisel that off. But I got a good fit. He says, famous last words. Um, okay. 
that's my my arena is more or less done I, i'd be sanding my bottom at this point um or the bottom of the arena um <laughs> i would uh, come back and this would be probably when i would put a guga or two on it i don't know if i even brought i don't think i brought a skew but i can use this um i like to I like to create a little groove right there where they come together because it's helpful when you're pulling it apart to know that, okay, that's where it comes apart and you can get your fingernails in there. And then just a few little grooves. I know I'm not using this tool as it's intended, but I didn't bring my skew. And we'll be messing with the top of this, so I'm not going to go any farther than that. Um, arena's pretty much done. I go to the drill press. I use a drill bit that's just slightly larger than my beads. I was finding like a quarter inch to about three eighths, depending on the size of the bead. On those smaller beads like I've got over here, I'd probably use just a little bit bigger than a quarter inch. You want them to set in there, but you also want them to be able to be hit and be knocked out of there too. So you don't want to set in there and, and die, basically. Um, on When I drill the holes, I'm drilling down and because your outer edge is a little higher than the inside of where you're drilling down, you're going to start get cutting your circle on, on one side. And about the time I see the full circle using a chisel point, chisel point bit, and about the time I've got the full circle of the bit is when I stop. You go too deep and then they're just going to fall down in there and they're just not going to come out of there very easy. Um, so you just want them to kind of lay in there and have a little bit to drop into, but not a whole lot. Um, I'm not going to drill this. I just, uh, that's easy enough, but you, you basically center up on all your, your spots, go around, eat, eat, eat. It goes real fast. Okay. So now I've got what I call the arena is done. It's all sanded nice. There's not any tear out or anything. <laughs> and now I've got to finish off basically, uh, oh, finish off the stadium. So I actually need this still before I pull it off of there again. Now we're really trusting that tape. Because the stadium ends up being just basically a disc when you're all said and done. It's just weird. Okay. So the first thing I want is to get that center point out. Remember where I put my tools. So I'm going to come in about a half inch uh, into the piece and go with a push cut. And I'm going to come back and widen that out because ultimately I'm going all the way through the piece. So I don't need to be tight or anything in there. And I'm going to listen to try to hear when it breaks through. And at this point, I am trusting my tape quite a bit to hold this outer edge on. So I'm going to give it a little push here. 
I am on, uh, threw it on one side, not quite on the other. There we go. Okay. We would have known if we had a problem right there, if this tape had come loose, because it would have started spinning around on there, but it wouldn't have went anywhere. Luckily, now you peel that inner piece out. Okay, so the tape helped hold that in long enough to get that all taken care of. Okay, so now I I have the shoulder that this is going to fit up against. I want to basically come over about that distance right there so that I start this curve, and the curve's going to go in like this on the inside here. I'm going to take pretty light cuts here because I don't want Jim to have to catch my piece of wood. <laughs> But he's ready. Okay, at the very top of this piece, which is that way, not, this is the bottom of this piece, the very top, if you plan to put a plexiglass piece in there, this is be where you'd want to create your lip for that plexiglass piece to go into. I'm not, uh, I don't think we're going to put it on this particular piece, but I'll go ahead and pretend we are. So... Right there. Now I'm going to have a piece spin off here. There it goes. And this would be a good time if you're going to do some sanding on the inside face here. Um, you could sand this shoulder. It looks like I've got a little lip in that shoulder but since I recentered it I didn't know how well it was going to let me do that um, and I can clean that that cut going into the face plate I can clean up a little bit here so I've got the bottom of the top piece done and we got to now just finish off the top of the top piece, which is the stadium. And so what I've been doing is just creating a jam chuck out of my face plate here. A little chamfer on the edge there to help me f find the center. I should have probably, well, I do have a little chamfer on that edge because of the way it was ground. All right. Famous words, one more cut. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be drunk. <laughs>
jam chucks, I think, are the most wonderful thing in the world. And it's unbelievable all the things you can use them for. Inside jam chucks, outside jam chucks, bowl jam chucks. There's just, it's like shrimp to Bubba on Forrest Gump. You got your inside jam chuck, you got your outside jam chuck. Hey, what do you know? I think you're safe, Jim. All right. Now we just need to finish off the top of the stadium. <laughs> So I'm gonna clean this edge up just a little bit right here. Now I know I've got a lot in this outer corner. I've got a lot of material um, that I can cut away. I found this kind of doming it up a little bit. <laughs> like on this piece, it just domes up, kind of does a, what do you call that, OG curve? There we go. Um, I think that makes it look kind of like a roulette wheel, and that's ultimately uh, what I defined the game at, or defined it as. So, um, in order to do that, then I'm just going to come over here, try to keep my tools up there, and I'm going to just take a little bit off of this edge. A little inside curve there, going to an outside curve there. Obviously, there are better woods than poplar, but think about who you're giving it to, unless you're giving it to like H&R Block or something. Eh? Who cares as long as it gets played with? The kids don't care. However, the one that I made out of walnut was gorgeous. <laughs> okay, I have my shape. You can shape it as much as you want. Now I'm just going to put a couple of goo goos on here to let you know that I had it on a lathe and it went round. All right. sand it this would be when I'd sand it um, most of these I've finished while they were off the lathe um, you'll probably have to determine when the best place time to, to finish that would be as far as in the process because like I say I, I even sand most of them off the lathe because I just kind of get excited and get them done and then go oh I should have sanded that while it was on the lathe but I forgot okay two pieces once the holes are drilled, you've basically got your arena for your top to spin into. And if you got a slope towards the center, sorry, Effie. If you got a slope towards the center, then the top's going to graduate or go there every time. And that's where the beads are going to hug and they're going to shoot out. So I want to tell you some things about the tops. Shape. show up on the third Saturday, second and fourth Saturday, any open shop, and have the top guys take you through making a top. I am not gonna go through a demo on tops because Jerry Darter's here and he'd just be embarrassed by me. <laughs> I'll let Jerry do a demo for me next year. <laughs> um, on these particular tops, the, the whole idea is that the beads go under and wedge themselves and that's what gets the action of them shooting out and so what I've typically done is created little ridges um, a slow gradual curve there I did try a couple where they're pretty flat the whole thing is pretty flat but establish those ridges those don't work quite as well as the ones that got a little curve you put too much curve on it like that one 
and what happens is the beads all come into these center ridges and it doesn't have enough circumference or or, or speed there and they just kind of tap around and they <laughs> and you go what's going on it's not working right when they uh are working right these beads go go crazy spinning around so think about if you're putting the window hey we're doing pretty good on time you want to see me cut the window you guys good with that okay um just because plexiglass is so much fun to play with I actually, my son came home with a small box of plexiglass from his shop class that his shop teacher had said, nobody's using this, you want it? He said, yeah, and brought it home. Dad takes anything, he knows that. <laughs> and it sat around for years and years and I never knew what to do with it. So when I had made the first top game, Virgil, is Virgil here tonight? He's not. Virgil was in the shop with me and I was saying, man, it'd be nice to make, you know, I was thinking that I could make a, a wooden lid that, that then it would all fit together and you'd keep the beads together and everything. And I think he said something. I don't know if he said window or what, but he said something that sparked my mind and said, oh, I've got plexiglass. I think I could try that. So I went home and never had turned plexiglass before easy not a problem it does uh friction causes it to melt so you sometimes get a little melting action but huh <laughs> yeah use dull tools if you want to melt it i did a little plexiglass work when i was in shop class in like junior high so i knew a little bit about the characteristics and then on some of my projects i actually used the plexiglass and melted it on the stove to make some of the stands for the pieces that I was making, which worked out really cool. And used just a little bit of plexiglass. So I'm on my last little chunk here that I could get enough to get a circle big enough to, to do a window. And I think uh, this one here was the one I was going to see if I could make a window for. Is that right? Nope, it was this one. So, I am, if I use the calipers and figure out my inside, my, my maximum dimension for the lip that's inside the lid. Then ideally, that will be what I cut this thing to. I am. There are ways. I'm going to wing it. Now, there's going to be some outer pieces here that I hope don't end up over there. Be ready to catch, Jim. Also, better make sure I push that up against there good and tight. Um, and also, I mean, I am going to drill a hole in the middle of this, so there's no reason why I shouldn't have this up against it, just for safety's sake. And that'll keep this piece, if I stay on the inside, that'll keep that piece from breaking through. Um, no, I've always used a cutoff tool and it's worked pretty good. I did change from the diamond to a, a little thinner one because it'll just cut through a little easier and I can gauge it a little bit more. But isn't that fun? Those little things coming up. I just love that stuff. Gets all over your shop and everything. Oh, that's... supposed to work that way oh god I made a big old gouge through it okay I'm not gonna do this uh, I, I didn't I probably didn't have my tape really 
stuck on there good enough and I definitely didn't have this pushed up against it hard enough. But once I cut my circle, then I take a Jacobs chuck and drill. I used a 3 8 inch hole. I drill through it. Now, once that is done, then I'll take, I'll take my um, spindle gouge and I'll, I'll just kind of dip into that or I'll do a pull cut out of that circle. And what I'm trying to do there is make my eighth inch thick plexiglass about a sixteenth inch thick or less where it hits the top, so on that inside. So I'm, I'm drilling a hole and then I'm just pull cutting it out so that it just kind of grooves it. If you guys have a chance and take a look at the ones that I've got done over there, you'll see what I mean. Um, this stuff does polish real easy on the, on the Beal buffer. Um, so I think I've got a little thick here. I'd actually have to sand it all the way down and then, and then try to buff it out. But um, on small marks and things, you can kind of get those out. And especially where I was using the spindle gouge and, and, and creating that little dive going into the center hole, um, sanded it down with probably got it to about 320 or 400, put it on the beel and, and polished it up and it, it's clear now. So, I mean, it doesn't take much. I think that's pretty much it. I apologize for kind of screwing that up, but um, the window just kind of adds a nice little highlight. It, it's nice to be able to put everything into uh, one concise package and, and be able to, you know, travel around with it and the beads not be flying around. But I also have um, bags that I'll put the beads in with, with the top that goes with it. and. I've got several examples over here during break or whatever. Go check them out. I've got, I think there's about eight or nine pairs of pieces of poplar that I've squared off that are here for you guys to grab that anybody wants to try this thing. Um, I've got 2,000 that I'll never use 2,000. I've got a bunch of ammo here and I don't even have an airsoft gun. So there's baggies up here grab some ammo, <laughs> grab some beads, um, grab a couple of pieces, and you've got half of what you need to get started. Go out and buy some Turner's tape, because I guarantee you, if you've never used it and you use it, you'll find all kinds of uses for it. So it's something nice to have in your shop, no matter if you're doing this project or not. Um, 3 8 inch maple dowel, right, Jerry? 3 8 inch maple dowel. 3 8 inch hole, glue in, that's the start of your, of your um, top. And for this function, your denser, heavier woods works a little better. It get, you get a little bit more weight to them, then they'll throw the beads out a little bit more and, and stuff. But that's pretty much it. It was a fun little project, and I've been kind of goofing around with it. I have a few sales. I go to Manhattan every year and sell with the Lions Club has a woodworkers uh, sale while they're, they're doing their pancake feed. So I figured I'll make up a few and I'll take them down there and see if they sell. I don't, I don't know. I think they're kind of fun. Um, you see those in Target every Christmas, there's always a stand of executive desk games, you know, that are stupid little dartboards and things like that. That's what I kind of thought of. So that's why I called it a desktop roulette. It, kind of just sets around on your desktop and people come by and want to spin it. I've got the one, the bigger one that I have over there. I set it on our uh, end table and every day I'll spin it to see how good my day is going to be. If I get all 12, it's a golden day. <laughs> well, that's it. Thank you. Yes. I do. I got 10. I think I copied off 10. I, I took one. So there's nine here. Also on the website, I sent it in and um, it's posted under the library uh, button on the website. Um, it's got kind of the steps I took and, and granted, it, there's 10 different ways to skin a cat here. So you, you might find an area where you say, well, he did it this way, but I think I'd be more comfortable or I like it doing it this way or I want to use a bowl gouge instead of a spindle gouge on the inside, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I've got some diagrams in there to kind of show, indicate what the pieces are like. And then, like I say, I did create a little grid there so that you kind of, if you want 12 
e exact marks, then that'll give you the 12 marks to put on it. Okay? No problem. And they're up here. I don't, I don't really want to take any of this home, so I hope somebody grabs some. <laughs> Um, next month's challenge, make a game. Make, it doesn't have to be this game. Go out and find something. Uh, it can be as simple. Simple is good. You know, you find simple things that you can give away as gifts and things, and you can turn a hundred of them in a day. That's, that's great, you know. So that's what I want is just any kind of game. I don't, it doesn't have to be a top game. It can be any kind of game, but turn a game. Something with wood. Not playing cards. <laughs> Somewhere in it should be round. <laughs>